the Federal Reserve seems hell-bent on economic destruction, coming for you, your jobs, your income, your money in an attempt to bring down the inflation that they caused by printing trillions in the first place. But don't fear, because if things get too bad, they'll bail out the banks. The March FOMC meeting concluded on Wednesday. They released their statement saying that they are raising rates by another quarter of a percent and that they will continue to tighten as long as it is necessary. In fact, they anticipate that some more policy firming may be appropriate still in order to return inflation to 2% over time. Now, given the recent economic chaos with things like Silicon Valley Bank collapsing, many people were expecting the Federal Reserve to completely abandon course and stop raising rates. And so we can see that they are somewhat paying attention to this. It just hasn't changed their decision yet on what to do moving forward with monetary policy. Here we can see all of the differences between what the Federal Reserve said in its statement last time versus this time. You can see they added this section on the banking system, saying that it is sound and resilient, that recent developments are likely to result in tighter credit conditions for households and businesses and to weigh on economic activity activity, hiring, and inflation. The extent of these effects is uncertain. They also said they will closely monitor incoming information and assess the implications for monetary policy. Watching the press conference and hearing the way that Powell answered the questions, we get an idea of what they meant by this in their statement. Essentially, inflation or fighting inflation is still their number one stated goal. They are ignoring all else. Now, they are monitoring the other information, everything else that is happening, like bank failures and things like that. However, they are currently saying that's not enough to get us to abandon our fight against inflation. However, they did mention that credit conditions could get considerably tighter for individuals and corporations. He said and detailed in his answer to a couple questions that this may mean that they won't have to get as aggressive with their own monetary policy. Basically, what he's saying is they raise rates in order to slow down economic activity. They want to stimulate people to save, to stop spending, not take out as much debt, pay off debt, reduce the money in circulation, reduce economic activity. Everything going on with the banks right now could do that for the Fed. If banks, which it looks like they are, have to increase their tight conditions with lending. They have to decrease their overall lending. They cannot stimulate economic activity as much as they have before. We are likely to see a reduction in bank lending. Again, as credit conditions get tighter, that may take the place of the Federal Reserve having to get mon monetary conditions tighter. So the Fed is basically saying, hey, look, we're either going to have to keep on fighting inflation with our monetary policy or this contraction in bank lending and credit conditions through the banks will do that for us. But either way, things are getting tighter. And he reiterated this, it doesn't matter what it takes, whether it takes a recession, whether it takes banks contracting credit conditions, or whether it takes monetary policy becoming more and more and more restrictive, we will bring inflation down. And as we've seen, he's already started to break things. Silicon Valley Bank broke, which means that it's likely more things start to break as this tightening continues. We also learned that the FDIC limit will not be raised, even though there was speculation that the FDIC limit would be raised across the board or even that all deposits would be guaranteed. In the press release, Powell was asked about this because he made a comment in the press release saying that all deposits are safe. So when they questioned him, they were saying, are you guaranteeing all deposits? And he basically said, no, people should feel, he literally said feel, that their deposits are safe because we have shown that if something happens like Silicon Valley Bank that threatens the system, we will bail it out. But over the last 20 years, there have been dozens of bank failures. This was the first one, obviously 2020 and 2020, or 2021 and 2022 didn't have any bank failures, but prior to that, there were bank failures every single year. And all deposits in excess of the FDIC limits were not guaranteed. 
they were not bailed out because they were not deemed systemically important. So yes, if a bank like Chase starts to collapse like Silicon Valley Bank did, yeah, they are considered systemically important. They will be bailed out. But none of the smaller banks have a bunch of tech billionaires that lobby the government and have a bunch of money going to politicians to pay for their campaigns and to uh, fund the things they want funded. And so no, the small banks are not safe, despite the fact that this one bank got bailed out, that doesn't mean your small bank will too. Again, the Federal Reserve is tightening conditions. Things will start probably breaking even more and they don't care unless it'll bring down the entire system. And then finally, Powell was asked about the recent spike in the balance sheet, given the fact that they said they're continuing to let assets bleed off of their balance sheet. Will this spike in their balance sheet undo the tightening effects? And as I explained in my last video about what this means, essentially no. This spike in their balance sheet ensures that the money already in existence doesn't disappear or cease to exist. Prior quantitative easing, such as what happened during 2020 and 2021, was there to increase the overall money in circulation, not just to keep the same amount of money from disappearing. So you can't just pay attention to the size of the balance sheet, you also have to pay attention to the composition or where it's going. And right now, at least, these are short-term loans that are not going to be net inflationary, they're just gonna be stopping something that would have been deflationary. The last question that people have about this is, isn't the Federal Reserve's balance sheet the exact same as all these banks? Every bank right now bought a ton of debt at rock bottom interest rates. And now that interest rates are higher, that means that the prices of that debt are lower. So all banks are sitting on a ton of unrealized losses right now. And nobody has a bigger balance sheet than the Federal Reserve. They're sitting on $9 trillion of assets that have huge unrealized losses. Not only that, but these extra short term loans, this $300 billion spike, these are one year loans that the Federal Reserve has provided that they are saying that those banks have to pay back. And so those could get defaulted on very easily if the bank just decides not to pay those loans back. Well, number one, the Federal Reserve can actually print money. So they don't care about profitability. If they had to sell all these assets at a loss, they just print to make up the difference to pay for their expenses. And so because they can print for their expenses, that just simply means that they won't have to sell at a loss. They can just wait until these loans mature and they get back at par value. They get back everything that the, the entire amount of the principal plus the interest. And then finally, the Federal Reserve controls interest rates. And so if they're sitting on a big pile of unrealized losses that for one reason or another, maybe they need to make go back to a profit, they need to make sure it's not a realized loss, all they have to do is push interest rates down again, and that will push prices back up, and then they would be able to liquidate at a, uh, at a profit or at least not at a huge loss. And so all of these assets, these unrealized losses sitting on the Federal Reserve's balance sheet is not a problem for them. It is not something that would cause them to not be able to continue to do business the way they've been doing. Uh, all it means is that if necessary, they can flip the switch and go from a deflationary environment to an inflationary one. And that is the key here. And that is what many people are wondering. Yes, all the things happening right now are extremely deflationary. We are moving forward into tightening credit conditions where there is less money available. Money is getting sucked out of circulation. Anybody who had the ability to spend money is now saying, I'm not going to spend money. Anybody who had the ability to lend money is saying, I'm not going to lend money. People are saving, trying to deleverage, looking forward into hard economic times. But at any point, the switch could get flipped and the printer could fire back up if the deflationary death spiral gets too big. And then at that point, the question is what happens? Do we tip over into hyperinflation? Well, that is a video for another time. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.